There's an old saying that I heard that there's two kinds of people born in the hospital every day. There's a person born in the hospital that's going to get a job, and there's a person born in the hospital that's going to give that person the job. You have to decide along the way which one you're going to be. You can be a leader, but a leader is a developed set of skills. It's a developed set. And, and the more, but see, here's what stops the average person from being a leader. Is the fear of the consequences of leading. Most people don't want the responsibility of being a leader. But let me tell you the trick though. The responsibility and ramifications and consequences of being a follower is dire, more dire, and more severe. Because now, as a follower, you just got to go along with whatever. You know how many adjustments you got to make when you a follower? <laughs> but the man come in and decide I'm having layoffs. And he hand you a slip and it's Christmas. What? That wasn't in your plans. But, ho, oh, you decided you ain't want to be a leader, you want to be a follower, now guess what? You got to deal with that. If I'm a leader and I own a company and the company start losing money, you think I'm fitting to not have my life? No, no. Cutbacks start on the follower. Well, you, the leaders don't go, well, let me quit. Because if I quit, ain't nobody eating. The cutbacks start at the bottom. So you have to make a decision if you're going to be a leader or not. But understand what a leader is, though. Sometimes you just really want to be the leader of your own life. See, you don't have to lead a world leader. I have no aspirations of being Martin Luther King. I have no aspirations of being Gandhi. None whatsoever. I had really no aspirations of being the leader that I've become today that I got young men listening to me that I wasn't even really counting on. I got, I got dudes emailing me, man, running up to me, man, at Essence. This brother ran up to me and Terrence was stopping him from talking to me. And the big brother, about 300 some pounds, sweating, had a chef coat on, had a thermometer pin, sweating all over the place. He had seen me come off stage, saw me go through the back. He ran all the way around to meet me. And Terrence, stand down, soldier. Well, this big dude right here ain't with that. He said, hey, hey, little man, little man, come on now. Ain't nobody got time for all this here. I'm trying to holler at this man right here because you don't know what I've been through. Stand down, soldier. Little man, before this turn into something else, I got to see him today. His whole thing was he was a prison inmate down in New Orleans, had been listening to me on the radio since 2005. Did his five years, got out the joint, started studying in prison food prep because he said, man, you, ain't, you told me one morning you ain't got to sit there and do nothing. You can better yourself from behind the wall and make one plan on not to come back. He said, you changed my whole life. He said, I come to tell you, man, I'm the chef right now at the Hilton. But the big dude was just crying. You know, we end up hugging. I cried with him because, you know, I, I, I be feeling people like that. I have no idea, nor did I have an aspiration to be an inspirational person to them. But I have always asked God in my own way to make me a relevant person. You know, I, I don't want to be a cat that when I die, it ain't nobody, ain't nobody tripping. Church empty. Ain't nothing right here because you know it's two things you know when a person dies on their tombstone there's a birth date there's a dash and then there's a date of your demise and let me tell you something when you die they're not going to talk about your birthday they're not going to talk about the day you die the biggest conversation will be about that dash that little dash that's the life you lived in the middle of that date of birth and the date of demise. That dash will determine who you are.